Hello, today we will recap a sci-fi action movie from 2011, titled In Time. Spoilers ahead, watch out and enjoy. The movie starts in the year 2169, where people are made to stop getting old when they turn 25. When this happens, a timer shows up on their arm, with just one year left on it. They need to work to stay alive, because time is now what everyone uses as money. This basically means that rich people can live forever. The country is split into different time zones that separate the different classes, and the richest place is called New Greenwich. Meanwhile, in the poor part of town, a guy named Will lives in a small apartment with his mom Rachel. They struggle to get by every day due to money problems. Will has an idea to earn extra cash by participating in time fighting, but his mom warns him against it because it usually doesn't end well. Despite their difficulties, Will is kind-hearted. He often helps a young girl named Maya by giving her some of his time so she can survive too. One night, Will goes to a bar where he used to gamble. While there, he notices a man named Henry, who's acting a bit crazy and buying drinks for everyone. What's strange is that Henry's timer shows he has a hundred years left. Will tries to caution Henry about a gang called the Minutemen, who steal time from others, but Henry doesn't pay attention to the warning. All of a sudden, the leader of a gang named Fortis shows up and challenges Henry to a time fight. Everyone else in the bar runs away, except for Will, who hides at the back. Henry agrees to the challenge but asks to use the restroom first. With only one guard with him, Will seizes the chance, knocks out the gang member, and escapes with Henry through the back exit. They dash a few blocks and find safety in an old abandoned factory. Will is puzzled about why a rich guy would be in the poor area, and Henry confesses that he left New Greenwich, because he's 105 years old and tired of living that way. He clarifies that the cost of surviving in the poor area keeps getting higher, deliberately causing people to die, as the wealthy can only stay alive if the poor don't. When morning comes, Henry capitalizes on waking up before Will, and transfers almost all of his time to him, only keeping five minutes for himself. Shortly after, Will wakes up and sees a message written on the window, don't waste my time. He looks outside and sees Henry on the bridge, almost out of time. Will goes to the bridge to check if Henry is dead, and then he runs away but he doesn't know there are cameras watching. After that, he goes to his friend Borel's house. Borel has a wife named Greta and a new baby. Will talks to Borel alone and gives him 10 years of his own time, because they've been friends for 10 years. In the evening, Will goes to the bus stop to wait for his mom, but she doesn't come. She only has an hour and a half of time left, and the bus fare got more expensive in the afternoon, so she can't afford it now. The walk back home takes two hours, so Rachel has to run if she wants to see her son again. When Will figures out what's going on, he starts running too. In the middle of the street, mother and son collide, but sadly it's too late. Rachel dies in Will's arms. The following morning, the timekeepers, the police in charge of time-related matters, find Henry's body in the river. Agent Leon thinks he was killed for his time, and instructs his team to review the security footage. Although they can't see the moment Henry's body falls due to the camera angle, they do spot Will's face. This leads them to assume that Will is responsible for Henry's death. Meanwhile, Will is set on getting revenge for his mother's passing. He pretends to be a wealthy man who's lost, and hires a fancy car. He instructs the driver to take him to New Greenwich, but he has to pay a pricey toll whenever he crosses into a different area. Upon reaching the city, he stays in a nice hotel. While there, a wealthy girl named Sylvia notices him. Will's rapid movement through various time zones raises suspicion within the system, enabling the timekeepers to track his whereabouts. Agent Leon also realizes he's pursued Will's father in the past. The next day, Will buys an extremely expensive car and drives it to a party hosted by the richest man, Weiss. Sylvia, Weiss's daughter, becomes intrigued by Will and asks him to dance, sensing that he's from the poorer part of town. She confesses that at times, she wishes she could experience life in the ghetto. She feels trapped by her father's security guards and lacks real freedom. Eventually, Weiss invites Will to join a poker game. However, their game is interrupted by the timekeepers, who have pinpointed Will's location by tracking the purchase of his luxury car. Will is brought into a private office for questioning. He explains that Henry intentionally let his time run out, but the timekeepers don't believe him. They consume most of his remaining time, leaving him with only two hours for their procedures. Agent Leon remarks that Will reminds him of his father, a person Will doesn't remember well. During their conversation, Weiss and Sylvia come to check on the situation. Will seizes the opportunity, attacking the timekeepers and grabbing a gun before escaping. With the gun in hand, he takes Sylvia hostage, 
and flees through the back door using his car. As they drive, Will asks Sylvia for some of her time to help him, but she declines. Upon reaching a bridge, Will's attention is drawn to security cameras, causing him to miss a spike strip on the road, and the car crashes. Both Will and Sylvia lose consciousness and are found shortly after by Fortis and his gang, who begin stealing Sylvia's time without hesitation. When they regain consciousness, Sylvia becomes anxious about her limited time and asks for Will's assistance. Will finds it ironic that she's now open to sharing, but he still helps her and drives her to town. After they've left, the timekeepers arrive to inspect the crashed car. Agent Leon requests his daily pay, as he never carries more time than he needs. Observing the situation, Leon decides not to actively pursue Will anymore, believing that Will will reach out to them eventually. Will seeks help from Borel, but Greta delivers unfortunate news, Borel drank excessively and died, still having 9 years on his timer. Sylvia starts to panic again, but Will spots her fancy earrings and takes her to a pawn shop. Despite the shop about to close, the owner makes an exception upon seeing the earrings' value. Recognizing their urgency, the owner realizes their dire need for time, and offers them just two days. Next, they head to a pay phone. Will instructs Sylvia to call her home phone, allowing him to communicate with Leon. Will makes a demand for a thousand years to be distributed among the timelines in the ghetto as a ransom. After hanging up, Leon informs Sylvia's parents about the ransom demand. Weiss however, is hesitant to part with even a small portion of his vast wealth. Will takes Sylvia to his apartment for the night. Sylvia changes into Rachel's old clothing. Curious, Sylvia asks about Will's father. Will reveals that his father was a skilled time fighter who taught him some techniques. Sylvia is hurt by her father's lack of concern, but she comes to realize that Weiss accumulated his wealth by exploiting others. Will tells Sylvia to go back home, but she refuses, leading them to decide to work together. Later, Sylvia questions Will about his willingness to share time if he had it. When he affirms his intentions, she devises a plan. Together, they steal a money truck owned by Weiss, and deliberately crash it into a time bank. They steal as many time capsules as possible. The remaining capsules are left behind for the people in the ghetto to claim. By the time the timekeepers arrive, nothing remains. In the evening, Greta discovers a time capsule among her laundry, left by Will as an apology. He also visits Maya, who's sleeping on the streets, and leaves her some additional time to help her out. The remainder of the stolen time is donated to the timeline, and the clerk distributes it to those in need. Will and Sylvia embark on a spree of robbing time banks across various locations, causing their actions to make headlines. Weiss begins to suspect that his daughter may have tried to harm him, but his wife reminds him that he almost killed her first by suffocating her. Will and Sylvia secure a hotel room, going the extra mile by booking all available rooms and instructing the receptionist to keep it discreet. Later on, Fortis and his gang burst into the room, pointing guns at the couple. Fortis asserts his aversion to killing people without a fight and proposes a time fight. Will employs the technique his father taught him, and as Fortis watches his timer, Will starts taking his time. The guards draw near, stunned by the unfolding events. Will seizes the moment, shooting all of them, and then proceeds to exhaust Fortis's remaining time, effectively ending his life. By the time the timekeepers arrive at the hotel, Will and Sylvia have already vanished. A few hours later, Will observes that prices and loan rates are skyrocketing at an alarming pace, to counterbalance the influx of new time on the streets. Their minor thefts aren't causing any significant impact, it would take an impossibly huge amount of time to even dent the system. Thankfully, Sylvia has a lead on where to find such a colossal amount of time. The following day, Weiss grows uneasy about the situation, and steps out with an unusually large number of bodyguards. The guards get worried when they think there's a danger, but it's just Sylvia saying she wants to give up. Weiss believes her and gets ready to help. This distraction lets Will sneak up behind Weiss and hold him hostage. Will and Sylvia take Weiss to his office and make him open a safe with a million years of time inside. After putting Weiss in his office, Will and Sylvia escape. When the timekeepers find out about the robbery, they hurry after them. They block the bridge to stop them from going back to the ghetto. Leon is also chasing them. When he finally catches up, he's so focused on them that he forgets to get his daily pay. Ignoring the bullets, Will drives through the barrier between different time zones, making his way into the ghetto. Leon doesn't waste time and crashes into their vehicle. Will quickly gets out of the car, hands the million-year capsule to Maya, and then pretends to give up along with Sylvia. However, the timeline announces that there's enough time for everyone. An excited crowd fills the street, blocking Leon's path and allowing Sylvia and Will to escape. Leon pushes people aside to reach his car and continues pursuing the pair, 
eventually catching up to them. Will suspects that Leon is also from the ghetto. Leon confirms this, revealing he worked hard to get out, as it should be, before attempting to arrest them. Will points out the futility, noting that he and Sylvia have only a few minutes left to live. Leon checks his own timer, realizing he doesn't have much time left either, because he didn't collect his pay. At that moment, Leon's timer reaches zero, and he dies on the road. With only seconds remaining, Will and Sylvia share a goodbye kiss. But then Will realizes the timekeepers have time in their vehicles. He rushes to Leon's car to take some for himself. Sylvia is slower, worried she won't make it, but Will races back to her, meeting halfway so they can share time before their time runs out. News broadcasts across the nation show people flooding the streets, crossing time zones to reach New Greenwich while factories shut down. Workers at the timekeeper's office decide to leave as they recognize their powerlessness. Will and Sylvia manage to evade capture, targeting bigger banks to prevent the old system from returning. 